to go. Well, I'm not leaving. I was born in this hole, and I'm dying in this hole. The planet broke before the guard did. That's a maxim we will take to heart today when we look at fortress worlds in Stellaris. We're going to look at how and why to build them, as well as their effectiveness as of patch 3.9. If you're worried fortress worlds and fortress habitats weren't effective anymore in Stellaris, well then let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to worry anymore. They are effective. When you find yourself at war in Stellaris, you'll sometimes find yourself outmatched by your opponents and unable to win the day through direct engagement. When that is the case, a robust defense of your borders is crucial in order to protect your core worlds, which form the heart of your industrial base. If you lose your worlds and you lose your industrial production, you'll find yourself losing the war very, very shortly afterwards. There are two ways to defend your borders. The first and probably least useful is by building star bases that have FTL inhibitors. An attacking force cannot enter a system and then pass through it if you have an FTL inhibitor in that system. So they will have to engage the star base. But if your enemy already outnumbers and outmatches you, that is going to be completely useless as they roll over your star base. The other option is to fully embrace your Cadian heritage and build a fortress world. You will need a few technologies in order to do this. First and foremost, FTL inhibition will be required. Without this, you will not get the FTL inhibitor auras on either your star bases or your planets, meaning enemy ships will be able to simply pass through, ignoring your heavily fortified border worlds and charge straight for your juicy industrial heartland, your core worlds. The other technology you need is global defense grid. This will unlock the fortress building which is the only building you can build on your planet which comes with an FTL inhibitor, thus turning your planet into one giant rocky starbase. In order to research Global Defense Grid, you will need the ground defense planning technology first, so make sure you grab this one. Now I did say that any world can be turned into a fortress world. To do that, we simply need to build a stronghold and then upgrade it to a fortress. Fortresses require some volatile moats, so every now and then you'll need to put down a chemical plant in order to supply the upkeep for that. Once you have a fortress on a planet, you don't really need to add anything else. I would recommend putting down a planetary shield generator, along with taking the never surrender tradition in the unyielding tree and the survival of the fittest tradition in adaptability. Combining those two traditions and this planetary shield generator, we will hit the maximum orbital bombardment damage reduction of minus 98%. That will mean any ships trying to get through the system will have a hard, hard time. You see, fortresses will only provide their FTL inhibitor as long as the planetary devastation remains below 50%. Once it is above 50%, the FTL inhibitor will disable and enemy ships can simply fly through the system, ignoring your fortress. Currently in Stellaris, you don't actually need to build additional strongholds on your fortress world to make them more impregnable. More strongholds will add more soldier jobs and soldier jobs produce planetary defense armies. Planetary defense armies do have quite high health and deal good damage, meaning they make useful garrisons. However, they aren't the most effective way of preventing your enemy breaking your fortress world in the long run. For that, you will need to recruit and garrison your fortress with offensive armies. Whatever army you would like to pick, actually. And if you're enjoying this video, please reinforce that like button. Something you need to be very aware of when building your fortress worlds, though, is civilian casualties as devastation ticks up either from bombardment or from a massive ongoing ground battle, because don't forget armies deal collateral damage not just to buildings, but also to your population, which will kill them over time. When you hit 25% devastation, you'll notice that the ongoing ground battle will start to kill off your pops one by one. This is especially devastating when you have lots of pops working the soldier jobs, as this will cause your defensive armies to despawn. So if you're trying to break through a fortress world with lots of armies, collateral damage is the easiest way to get rid of those defenses if they have many, many soldier jobs. 
The best way to cut through this quickly is to go with something like a Butcher General, giving you 50% additional collateral damage, or unleashing horrors like Xenomorphs on the planet below. Xenomorphs, along with Mega Warforms, deal absolutely insane levels of collateral damage. If you are defending the planet though, don't worry too much. Your planet will not become completely destroyed currently, as your last three pops will not die from this excess collateral damage. It does not matter how high the devastation goes, it does not matter how many soldiers on either side die, the last three pops will remain resolute, thus meaning the planet will break before the guard does. Due to the fact we can only guarantee the safety of the last three pops on any planet, building too many soldier jobs, whilst great for increasing your naval capacity, will not increase the effectiveness of a fortress world. Only assault armies can do that. Now all of that being said, your opponent only needs to get this devastation up to 50%, which will then mean the FTL inhibitor doesn't function. They can then place a single starship in orbit, bombarding the planet, keeping that devastation above 50%, and moving on with their ships and fleets further into your territory. Overall, there is basically no defense you can mount that will be effective forever against an enemy with many armies that deal high collateral damage, as they can invade your planets one by one, killing all of your population through collateral damage and leaving you with absolutely no economy left. Whether or not they actually win the war at that point becomes something of an academic point, because you will simply have nobody left to do anything after the war is over. For that reason, getting reductions in orbital bombardment damage is essential to stop fleets doing this to you. The only real defense against collateral damage is getting generals with traits that reduce army collateral damage on the planet. However, don't forget those leaders can die in the line of duty, and once a battle has started, you cannot employ a new leader on a planet, even if your previous leader has died. One thing I would also recommend later in the game is actually putting down a fortress on every single planet you have in your empire, especially in your core territory. Later in the game, jump drives become an ever-present danger, and that might mean the enemy is able to bypass your FTL inhibitors by jumping past them. However, if you jump into a system using your jump drive with an FTL inhibitor on a planet, you will then be completely unable to leave the system and go anywhere else. So making sure there is a fortress in every system you control will basically act like bulkheads, preventing the enemy from running rampant through your territory, even if they have jump drives. And there is one last thing to remember when you are building a fortress world, and that is the fact your enemy may decide that fighting on the ground there is simply too inefficient, and they might bring up a planet cracker instead to simply destroy it that way. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to find out how habitats work now in Stellaris 3.9, click the video on screen now.